We've seen it play out time after time across the country. Parents standing up and speaking out in an effort to have more say in their kids' lives and their children's education. But it appears President Biden, he doesn't agree. Making comments at a teacher's event yesterday that suggests kids don't necessarily belong to their parents. There's no such thing as someone else's child. No such thing as someone else's child. Our nation's children are all our children. As I often say, you teachers hold the kite strings to lift our national ambitions aloft. You really do. Imagine, imagine, just imagine if we didn't have great teachers in this country. What, what difficulty we in. You are determining our future. Putting aside that it's hard for me to reconcile the freedom message with the fact that our children are not our own, putting that aside, Kevin, there are some real vulnerabilities here politically. We saw this in Virginia when McAuliffe made that remark on stage about parents not having a role in the curriculum. Education surged by 10 points in importance. McAuliffe, who once had a 35-point advantage on this, swung the other way to Youngkin who got a nine point advantage, 42 point swing. So there are some vulnerabilities with this. It's a great point. And, and clearly that's how Governor Yunkin won that election. And I think what the president was speaking towards, uh, hopefully in that address was the collective nature that, especially coming out of COVID, and we're seeing these insane rates of depression uh, and children falling behind, that we have a collective responsibility of, uh, as Americans to look out for our children, especially the teachers. That should not discount the incredibly important role that parents play, because that is a landmine, I think, for Democrats if we continue to get in between parents and their kids on these curriculum issues, on teachers' issues, and things like that. Maya, because that sounds like a clean a cleanup effort. Of course it's your fault. <laughs> on your side of the aisle, you Im impose the lockdowns. Well, through the school unions. So, of course, there is this idea, I would imagine, uh, from the top down, from the president down, that you've got to clean up on aisle six now. Yeah, there is a lot of mental health issue um, yeah. laying out there, and everybody's got something different, so I, li I like not to put it all in one basket. Some kids are depressed. Some kids are having a hard time making eye contact. Their little self-esteems are just damaged. Yeah. They haven't had one-on-one -on -one care. Some of them went hungry for a period of time because schools were the answer for your meals. I mean, that was certainly the case here in big cities like New York. So I understand this idea of, well, let's just, you know, take sweeping action and say the kids are all ours. What happened when they were in lockdown? They were still ours, by the yeah. way. I was doing all the science projects next to the kids. They were much smarter than I, fortunately. Harris. So I get it. But then what about the 85,000 migrant children that your administration has lost? And I say well, yours because it's your part. Well. Yeah. well, you've got to find them first. We do. But listen, we got, uh, we got it wrong on a lot of that in terms of the, the school from home issue. Uh, and that is something that Democrats and a lot of these governors need to own. But where do we go from here? How do we support these children now? And I think that was what the president was trying to make from the Rose Garden. You, that, you don't want comments. the president to try to own that? Because a letter from the, from we, the everyone school boards, who's involved, those things went through the White House. The, the president wasn't the president CDC. when a lot of these schools were closed down, though. That, that's the issue. I mean, a lot of that was during the ending of the Trump administration. Which we president advocated Biden didn't really... ad nauseum from certainly, the podium for opening schools. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the Republican point. The Democrats are the ones who fought that. Emily, I want to flash back to Biden a year ago. He said almost the exact same thing. Take a listen to this. You've heard me say it many times about our children, but it's true. They're all our children. They're not somebody else's children. They're like yours when they're in the classroom. You know, uh, teachers are very important in society, but I, I sat here with you, Emily, for 10 months being pregnant. I can promise you that's my child. I'm the one who gave birth to it. It's not someone else's. Oh. Right. I think w w what we're seeing here is typical Biden and it's typical Democrat Party, which is a platitude that they use that they can be summed up in one headline that can be summed up in their tweet character limit. But when you dig down deep, what he is articulating is that he is beholden to the unions. He is articulating that actually all children are, are, they don't matter and they are not all his because 85,000 are missing that came across the border that he claims yeah. to feel compassion toward. We know in headlines, we know in detail, excruciating detail from district attorneys and from attorneys general about the abuse and the squalid conditions that migrant children had to endure um, in their facility, in their processing. We know that he sloughed off from one agency and one department to another, these migrant children from Youth and Home, Health and Services, et cetera. So it seems that it's only convenient to him when he's standing behind a podium. But when it comes to the policy making, the hard work, the CDC saying, yes, because of our kids' mental health, because they were out of school for so long, this is a crisis. 
It is an emergency. I haven't heard him respond to that whatsoever. Um, and so everything here is frankly dangerous because what what he means by it is far more insidious than simply, I'm here to take care of all your children. And remember policy like Gavin Newsom, right? If you are a transgender youth, you have a sanctuary in his state and then mm -hmm. the state becomes your guardian. So there has real implementation effects with this kind of dangerous thinking that takes the rights away from parents. I, I have we're some seeing... parental bills I'd like to send the White House. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Kim, it's not just in government we're seeing it, we're seeing it across media. New York Magazine had this out, train up a child in the way he should yes, go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The book of Proverbs says to certain right wing Christians, the concept is simple. A child can be broken or stamped into shape, much like a domesticated animal. Oh, this callous gross. attitude towards parents, particularly parents of faith, it mm. seems to be ever present. Yeah. Kaylee, I beg, borrowed and stole to get my child Hunter. I went through years of infertility. Do not tell me that he is not my child. Do not tell me it takes a village to raise my child. I will raise Hunter till this very moment. He's 25 years old. He calls me every night. My values are his values. What we want to bring in the home are what we want to raise Hunter up. Children are a blessing. They are not for the world. I tell Hunter, be very careful the peers that you choose. Be very careful who you allow in your life. That creates the character of the man that I raised. Biden has nothing to do with that. Kim, that was Amen. so beautifully said. Wow. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.